Hello friends and good evening. It's Jordan. Welcome back to my channel. This video is coming to you guys a little bit later than I anticipated. You are probably seeing it on Sunday morning. It is Saturday night right now while I'm filming this. And it's coming to you unfortunately later than I anticipated because we have had some not so great news happened in our little corner of the universe over here with our little fur family. So last night on Friday, I came home from work and we noticed that our little orange fella, Rufy, was not in the house. And if you know anything about me or follow me anywhere on social media or watch like any of my reading vlogs or anything, then you know how obsessed and how much I love my, my cats and how much they're part of our family and so it's been a really really hard 24 hours because we don't know where he is so if you guys could just i don't know if you are religious and want to send out a prayer or just want to send out good thoughts and good vibes and are more of like a karma person just to try to get rufi to come back he's such a scaredy cat and he's outside in the cold and it's been snowing the last two days and just really really hope that he is okay positive thoughts yield positive results. Let me tell you about why we are even here today. So you've probably seen this advertised around the interwebs and like book Twitter and stuff recently because it starts on Sunday, which is when you're probably seeing this video, and it is a readathon, the first ever readathon hosted exclusively by Penguin Random House, you know, like the publisher. They reached out to me and asked if I would like to participate in the readathon. I'm not in any way being compensated for this. I'm just kind of like here to support them and I don't know, like participate get you guys involved and get you to participate i'm not like a host or in partnership with them at all it's a fantastically themed readathon that's very appropriate for my channel it is the hashtag fall into fantasy readathon which you'd be correct focuses around fantasy books it's a little different than most readathons i have the um hq page Pulled up here on my phone, which I will link down below for all of the information, but it starts on November 18th, Sunday the 18th, or I guess that could be a different day if you're in a different part of the world, but for me, the 18th is Sunday. I don't think it works that way. Never mind. It goes until the 25th, so it's an eight day readathon. You get Sunday through the following Sunday. The goal is to read at least four fantasy books off of your TBR. So there are eight challenges, but your goal is to only fulfill at least four of them to read four books that fit into these eight different challenges. And there are also six different buddy reads happening throughout the week. And each buddy read is hosted by a different booktuber. I will list all of that. Buddy read that I am planning to participate in and I'm really excited about it because everybody's been talking so highly of this book. And the more that it gets talked about, the more that I wanna read it. And that is Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. And this is being hosted by Haley from Haley and Bookland. And this one is happening the 19th. Crap. Oh wait, no. I keep thinking tomorrow's the 19th, but Monday's the 19th, so I have to get this book from my library, which I'm going there tomorrow, so I'll be fine. So basically the idea is to read this book on Monday, in one day, with Haley, and do it in like a buddy fashion. There are six different ones, Monday through Saturday. The Sundays do not have buddy reads. Kickoff and then like a final day frenzy. I will leave all the information down below because it's structured a little bit differently than most normal readathons. There's also tons of other participants who agreed to, like me, just read along with the readathon. The eight different challenges are number one, to read a new series. Number two, a book that's been on your TBR pile for too long. Number three, an LGBTQ fantasy. Number four, a diverse fantasy. Number five, multiple POV fantasy. Number six, a new fantasy. Number seven is a sequel. And number eight is a booktube recommendation. Like I mentioned, they want you to hit four of those eight challenges, reading four books for the week with fantasy. I feel like that is a really logical, reasonable number because fantasy books are a little bit denser, a little bit harder to get through, a little bit longer in most cases. So you're not going to be flying through here with any really short books. So for my TBR, I guess I'll tell you the books and then I will list which challenges I'm fulfilling. First one, as I mentioned before, was Four Star Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. This is the first book on my TBR and this one I am using to fulfill the diverse fantasy challenge because it is an Asian inspired fantasy, I believe. It's a Snow White retelling from the Evil Queen's perspective, but it has like Asian culture immersed throughout it. So I'm really excited to read this. 
The sequel just recently came out. The sequel is also involved in one of the buddy reads and I think it's that one's hosted by maybe you, I can tell you, Monica. from She Might Be Monica is going to host Kingdom of the Blazing Phoenix, which is the sequel to this book. This one I will be aiming to read in its entirety on Monday. The next book on my TBR is These Rebel Waves by Sarah Rosh, which is a book that I have been anticipating now for two years. Haven't read it and I am so ashamed. Absolutely love her other trilogy, the Snow Like Ashes trilogy. It's one of my favorites. It's actually the first YA fantasy I've ever read and I've been dying for this because it's about pirates and that is literally all I know. I just know it's about pirates and that's really all that matters in my opinion to sell me on such a book. It's a quite a hefty book but hopefully it's really fun and engaging and easy to get into and I cannot wait to read it and this one fulfills I think two different challenges. It's going to fulfill the new series challenge because it's the first book in new duology as well as the new release challenge because this one just came out. This one I'm borrowing from my mom so mom if you're watching this and you're wondering where your book is I didn't tell you but it's over here in my house. The next book I actually purchased because my library did not have a copy of it available and it didn't have any copies like in its circulation that I could borrow from. I don't know, clearly my library needs to sort that one out. Hoping it's really good because I don't spend money on books that I don't love. Really high expectations for this and that is Girls of Paper and Fire by Jane, almost by James Patterson. That is the publisher by Natasha Nyingen. I'm probably completely butchering that. I originally saw this on a lot laugh from Books and Lot Less channel who doesn't even really read fantasy but she read this and she was raving about it. For La La to give any fantasy book a five out of five stars that means a lot. This one I know a little bit more about. I know that it has a like demon king ruling over this kingdom and every year he picks like seven girls to come to his kingdom and be like his servants of some nature and then this particular year they actually invite eight girls and the eighth girl is the one that we're following and she falls in love with another girl at the castle I think very forbidden. I'm pretty sure this is an LGBTQ read. Read? LGBTQ read following a female female romance is what I was trying to say. Like I mentioned, this one fulfills the LGBTQ challenge. The final book on my TBR is Sight Witch by Susan Dunner, which is like my short book to kind of split up those large, large books. This one's also told in like dossier format with um, pictures and things, so I'm hoping this is a quick read. This is book 2.5 in the Witchland series. It's technically a prequel, but it's meant to be read after Wind Witch. Blood Witch is coming very very soon in January and I've been waiting for Blood Witch for almost two years now and I haven't read Sight Witch yet and I really really need to and I've been putting it off all year and I don't know why because it's like super short and shouldn't be a challenge to read. This one will fulfill the challenge of reading a sequel. Also I should mention I will be listening to an audiobook this week. It's kind of like an urban fantasy paranormal romance so like it kind of fits kind of. This week I will be listening to The Dream Thieves on audiobook by Maggie Steve Otter. I don't know if this counts for the readathon but I will be counting the pages because I'm going to be spending all of my driving time listening to the audiobook. I make my own rules and that's what I want to do. I guess technically this would be my TBR. I'm just really excited about this. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm excited to participate in the buddy read. As I mentioned it is a eight day readathon. It does span American Thanksgiving, probably why it's eight days. I would love to know if you are all participating in the Fall Into Fantasy Readathon. Tell me in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'll talk to you very soon. Bye!